for the sulcus sign stress test. It doesn't have any other name. It's used to test the inferior glenohumeral joint capsule, the acromioclavicular ligaments, and the coracoclavicular ligaments of the trapezoid and conoid. A positive test would be dimpling between the acromion and the humeral head as the humeral head displaces inferiorly. The patient would, would just be seated or standing with the arms relaxed down by the side. Um, the clinician would stabilize the same size shoulder, feeling for displacement between the acromion and the humeral head. The clinician would apply a distraction force uh, at the distal humerus, and there would be no compensations. For the sulcus sign test, patient's gonna be seated. I'm gonna have my stabilizing hand by the acromion and humeral head, feeling for displacement and looking for dimpling. And my uh, stress point and my other hand is gonna be pulling an inferior force. So I'm gonna pull, feel, and look for dimpling. That would be a positive. I'll also do it on this side. And that's silk sign. The anterior drawer test does not have any other names. It's used to test the anterior glenohumeral capsule and the medial glenohumeral ligament. A positive test is a click uh, with pain or anterior laxity. Um, the patient would be supine with the arm passively held in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion and abduction. Um, you would stabilize over the top of the shoulder so the scapula and clavicle are stabilized. Um, the clinician's testing hand would be um, on the upper arm underneath the humeral head and they would apply a slight traction force then provide a posterior to anterior glide on the humeral head. Um, the only compensation would be not relaxing allowing for a, uh, a negative test. All right, for the anterior drawer test, patient's gonna be supine, just relax. There's no stabilization needed because the scapula is stabilized by the table. I'm gonna have her arm underneath one armpit, have both hands behind the humeral head, apply a little bit of a distraction force, maybe at 20 to 30 degrees abduction, and then do a PA glide. And a positive for this, would be a painful click or pain or a painful click during the, during the motion. Relax. Do it both sides. And she, this is a negative. The jerk test has no other name. It's used to assess the posterior gleno glenoid labrum and the posterior capsule. Um, a positive test would be pain with or without a click. The patient would be supine with the shoulder off the edge of the table. Um, the clinician would stabilize the posterior shoulder. The stress point with the clinician's hand would be uh, on the patient's elbow. Uh, the patient or the clinician would apply an axial compression to the arm at the elbow while horizontally adducting the shoulder like such. There would be no compensations for this test. All right, for the jerk test, patient's gonna be supine. I'm just gonna bring her into 90 degrees of abduction, elbow here. I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna apply a axial force into the joint while horizontally adducting the shoulder. Keeping that axial compression as I move. Positive would be um, a painful, or pain with or without a click. And this is a negative. For the passive compression test, there is no other name. It's used to test the glenoid labrum. A positive test is pain or a painful click elicited in the joint. A patient would be sidelined with the affected shoulder up. Um, the clinician would stabilize over the AC joint. The, the stress point would be at the elbow. Um, the movement for the, for the test would um, 
the clinician would externally rotate the shoulder with 30 degrees of abduction, then apply an axial load while extending the shoulder. Um, there is no compensation for this test. All right, for the passive compression test, the patient's gonna be sidelined with the affected side up. I'm gonna stabilize on top of the shoulder, like the clavicle and spine of the scapula. Relax. Um, I'm going to abduct the shoulder about 20 to 30 degrees, externally rotate, and then I'm going to apply an axial compression into the joint while extending the shoulder. Um, a positive would be uh, pain or painful click in the joint. I would do both sides for ease. Stay at one. The load and shift test, it doesn't have any other name. It's used to assess the medial glenohumeral ligament in the posterior capsule. Um, a positive would be movement more than 25% of the humeral head size. The patient would be sitting uh, with the arm at the side. The clinician would stabilize over the same side shoulder. Um, the stress point would be um, fingers on the front and back of the humeral head. Uh, the testing hand would move the humeral head up to load it and then for anterior and posterior in the socket. There would be no compensations for this test. For the load and shift test, the patient's gonna be seated. My uh, stabilizing hand over the clavicle and spine of the scapula. My other hand is gonna be on the uh, anterior and posterior parts of the humeral head. I'm going to lift the humeral head up into the socket to load it and I'm gonna move it forward and back and try not to dig in with my front two finger or with my front fingers. And a positive with this would be movement 25% greater than the size of the humeral head. So we'll do it over here as well. Front and back of the humeral head, lift it up, shift the anterior and posterior. The Apley scratch test. It doesn't have any other name. It's used to assess the inferior glenohumeral ligament, medial glenohumeral ligament, the rotator cuff, the sits muscles, the anterior and posterior deltoid, the latissimus dorsi, teres major, uh, long head and short head of the biceps brachii, and the long head of the triceps brachii. A positive would be um, a unilateral range of motion deficit patient can be seated or standing. Um, there is no stabilization or stress point for this test. Um, the patient would be asked to touch their opposite shoulder with each hand and then to touch as far down on their back coming over behind them like this and then to go up as far on their back like this and there would be no compensations for this test. All right, this is the Apley scratch test. The patient can be either standing or uh, seated. She is seated for now. I don't need any stabilization or stress point. This is a totally active test. So she's just gonna follow my lead. So right hand to your opposite shoulder, left hand, opposite shoulder, yeah, okay. Take your right hand, go up the top, touch your back as far as you can. Do the same thing with the other hand. Okay, now right hand, go behind your back and up as far as you can. Left hand, up and back as far as you can. Uh, positive tests would be uh, unilateral range of motion deficits.